Hello, Soaring, I'm back. You might have seen the marketplace message at the bottom. Interestingly enough, after Trove crashed and I booted back in, it seems that the thing that actually caused my crash was the marketplace listing selling. So there's that from that other video. I would like to talk about some things. Yeah, things that you might not have known. Turns out there's a lot of little tidbits that players may not have realized that were a thing, but are. So we're going to cover those. One of those things, a good friend, she's, she's, hold on, she's, uh, in-game name is that one, right? Uh, let me know that Chlorum answers apparently, and I didn't know this at all. If you um, take a flower and you pop it out, if you shoot it with your staff, it like fills up its spawn bar faster. See how long this takes? But you shoot it with your staff, pumps it up, and you know, the healing flower like goes up faster, and so do the attack flowers. So the attack flowers usually take that long to get up, but if you shoot them, they go faster. Who would have thought? I didn't know that at all. So um, that's something really important. Another thing about, I don't know why I unequipped that because my Fae Trickster didn't need to take the staff off because the Chloromancer has one. But Another thing that people don't seem to realize is that you can take gems, like, I've heard this so many times. It's that people have been taking the gems and unslotting them to get the slot empty to equip a new gem. Like, they'll go through the trouble of buying a regeminator, right? And then, like, going into their inventory. And then, in order to replace the gem, they'll use the Regeminator on it to take it out so they can slot a new gem back in, right? And you don't need to do that at all. Like, you just take a gem, it's in your inventory, right? Inventory gem. Go over to one of your classes. I don't have one in there, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's really sad. Oh, Knight. Will you save me? I don't have a fire gem in that one. Shadowhunter, is, there, is your gem terrible? No, this one's actually pretty good. Um, This is embarrassing. Do you have a red gem? I don't play physical classes. Point is, you drag it right over top, and it'll destroy the old gem, and... You know, it, it'll, it'll replace it. You don't have to unequip the gems every time and people are doing that a lot so i'm titling this video throwing things trove didn't tell you in the tutorial part two part dos one thing trove didn't tell you in the tutorial is that currently during this week we have a bonus pressing f1 shows you your bonuses over here i have patron for three days because right now there's a double star bar so you normally get 500 cubits per day. But now that it's doubled, it's 1,000 cubits per day. But if you have patron, it multiplies that by an additional three. So you get 3,000 cubits per day. 3,000 cubits a day over three days, or over seven days. Man, you know what that is? Boom, death-defying vial. And if you have that, even if you have that, right? Boom. Legendary uh, dragon coin tome that like like eight days away from that. So Use that star bar time to your advantage. It is fantastic if you have the chance So it's really nice uh, Another thing about the about the shop that you may not necessarily know is that flasks if you're if you're trying to um, 
to get yourself to survive longer in battle. You'll have your death defying vials out and you'll pop all your pots, you know, and you're gonna be like, oh no, I'm out of pots. Well, if you look at the death defying vial, right? See, go in here to the shop, to the flasks. The death defying vial only has 10 flask capacity, whereas like the Elysian jug has eight, this has 12, this has, you know, 18 flask capacity. So if I change my flask type over to like something with a higher flask capacity, you'll get extra vials. So I'll show you. Go over here, pop all my pots, apparently regenerating pots for some reason. <laughs> and then it's a small percentage, percentage of maximum health. For some reason I was restoring pots I don't know, didn't know if you could see that. But if I change over to Death Defying Vial, I didn't get two extra flasks. That's really weird. Well, have that on camera. That was weird. Um, you should get two extra flasks. I know if you use the Elysian ban Bandolier, you get like eight extra flasks that you can use, or two, or three, or whatever. Um, and it's used as a strategy. Uh, if you wanted to pump out a lot of damage very quickly using your Arcane Emblem or whatever the one for physical is called because I don't play physical classes, weeps internally. Additionally, you, if you're going to use your emblems, I should be using Arcane and Unyielding because I'm a Fae and uh, unyielding emblem will protect me from taking the damage, reducing my passive, um, and giving me immortality for the duration I use my pots. So it could be that I would be impervious to damage in the three seconds that this lasts. Pot again. Pot again. All this time doing triple damage and being immortal. So I could be immortal for the full 30 seconds that DOTM fight would last while I'm pumping out 14 million damage per hit. 15 now, actually, okay, because I'm 15k power. I leveled this gym a couple times. Is it really level 19? That's really sad. I should probably level that up to level 20. But yeah, very useful. At the beginning of the game, and this is your next tutorial lesson, at the beginning of the game, people are having trouble um, reaching that 10 mastery barrier so that they can enter clubs, participate, and... I mean, you can enter a club without having 10 mastery, but you can't use any of the equipment. And then, on top of that, you can't trade with anyone. You pretty much can't participate in the game until you have 10 mastery. Well, if you go over to the hub, and the easiest way to do this is to, if you're uh, initially just starting the game, you're going to want to go over and dead serious collect 200 gl glim by running it over with your mount running the grass over with your mount collect a full 200 glim and then just hop over here to the guy who sells the fishing poles you buy a fishing pole for 200 glim and you buy a single lure so you come over here to this dude, you buy your fishing pole, buy the fish, basic fishing pole, you buy one lure for 10 more glim, you go over here, you fish once, fishing. Fantastic. Okay, you get your fish. You come over here to your cornerstone. And guess what you get from that fish? Guess what you get from that fish? You get approximately 10 glim, usually. This is the, this is the bad fish. It's just a bad fish. You come over here, you collect 10 glim, you repeat the process. At the same time, you're gonna earn mastery 
and you're going to earn glim. Occasionally you'll get fish that give you a thousand glim or a hundred glim or flux or scrolls or whatever. And you can use that to further increase your mastery past that 10 mastery barrier. And then get on with your life and play the rest of the game like a normal person and never fish again. Never again. Another thing that people don't realize is that people buy trophies. There are people who buy trophies. So if you have them in your inventory, if you have them in your inventory, over here, got some trophies. Seriously, there are people who buy them. Here's an example. We're gonna go over to this club world. This is Herp Derp's club world, who buys trophies hundreds and th of thousands of trophies and I do mean that very literally he has let's go over here and count 105,610 trophies he pays 200 flux a piece for them 200 flux a piece he even has a club named herp derp of I will buy trophies for 200 flux a piece He'll buy them all. You can sell them to him for f